men of Galilee, Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Hey guys, I'm going to share a rapture dream that our dear friend Shelly had on March 17th. But first, I just want to mention that we've been having a few problems with You Know Who Tube lately. I've decided to leave off the ending clips of our videos, but we'll end them with our word of prayer we've been putting on for a while now. I've decided that for each video we put on this platform, we will also place on Rumble. And those videos, I plan to have the entire ending clips with the trumpet and the tribulation scene and all that stuff. Guys, a drought of God's Word is truly coming, especially with all social media platforms, which has already been happening for a while now. I can just imagine the overwhelming type of censorship that will be going on after the rapture does take place. You know, we just recently had a video block that didn't even contain, did not even contain the material you know who tube said we did. It is totally unbelievable, but it is happening. And by the way, if our main channel should ever get a strike for a week or two, we, we have the links to our YouTube backup channel along with uh, all the other platforms we are using uh, in our des description box. Guys, to begin with Shelly's rapture dream, she told me, it was a normal day outside and the sun was shining and everything was calm and peaceful. My husband told me we had to drop some papers to a couple that he was doing a loan for. He is a mortgage broker. Next scene. We were at their home and talking and, and they were signing their loan documents. It was a nice time. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm so happy for them to be getting a new home. The next scene. I was walking into another home like I was going into a party-like setting, but I wasn't sure what we were celebrating. I didn't know anyone there, although it felt like I had, I had known them from my past or would know them in the future. It was a very odd deja, deja vu type of feeling. There was a beautiful blonde lady that greeted me, and I felt... I knew her in some way. I looked out this huge window and I saw the ocean view. I remember thinking, wow, this is a gorgeous view. Just then, the sky turned very, very dark and I could see this massive wave rolling towards the window. But it didn't look like a normal surf type wave. It looked like it was a vertical black pillar that went straight up to the sky and was headed for this house. I quickly started to run out towards the front door of this house. I saw people screaming and running around terrified. I saw a bus stop in front of this house and people came pouring out of it, screaming, this is it, we're all going to die. I then saw this very distinguished man coming from the direction of this bus, holding hands with a child and another younger person. He saw me and he said, hold our hands. He was calm, so I grabbed the hand of the young child that was holding his hand. I then saw a short distance away and then saw a huge and loud explosion had happened and buildings were collapsing to the ground and and just a lot of screaming and mayhem of people not knowing what to do or where to go. 
myself and these other kids that were holding this man's hands, we were just standing calmly watching all that was going on around us. Then he said to me, are you ready to go home? But I didn't hear that audibly. I just knew he had asked me that as we stood there quietly together, observing all the destruction that was happening around us. Right after he said this, I felt my body lift off the ground so fast. I remember laughing like I was a child again with indescribable excitement. I woke up as I was going up. It was incredible. Shelley also mentioned to me, guys, that <clears throat> after her dream, the other thought she had uh, about the loan document signed for a new home, she, she said she couldn't help but feel this had something to do with the leading up uh, to going home, like the documents signed are our salvation and ready for a new home in heaven. She said, that's just what I was thinking. Guys, what Shelley mentioned here reminds me of Ephesians 1, verses 12 through 14, which is referring to the earnest of our inheritance until the day of our redemption. Glory to God, guys. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 12 through 14, it says, This we should be uh, to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, <coughs> excuse me, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Guys, earnest money is a sum of money you put down to demonstrate your seriousness about buying a home. In most cases, earnest money acts as a deposit on the property you're looking to buy. You deliver the amount when signing the purchase agreement or the sales contract. It can also be part of the offer. Guys, the good news is that Jesus saved you and me. He bought us for a price, paid in full by him. We were, we were bought with the blood of Christ. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit, whom he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. God's salvation is our guarantee of eternal security. Glory to God. Guys, Shelley finished by saying that part of her dream could also had been a picture of securing souls before the destruction coming and the rapture of the church. She, she said, I just thought, why would that part of the dream also be so vivid and I was so happy about them signing the papers and the fact they now had a new home. I didn't even know them, yet I was excited for them. She says, the point being that we should be sharing the good news to people up until the very seconds of leaving for the rapture and for all of us to keep expecting and be ready for rapture to happen at any moment. Glory to God. Amen and amen. Such an awesome dream, Shelley. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. Guys, thousands have had rapture dreams. They're just confirming what we already know in our hearts and what's been written in the Word of God. Guys, it's going to happen, and it's going to happen soon. Guys, the time is really short, and our King truly is coming. And these are definitely difficult and perilous times we are living in. But I try my best to remember that in 1 John 5, 4, 
It says, For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Guys, let's keep our faith in God. Guys, no matter what may be laying on our path, just remember that God has made you an overcomer. The rapture of the church is truly upon us, and what keeps giving me strength to press forward is the fact that I know, that I know, that very soon I am going to be seated at the king's table. Jesus took me just as I was and saved me to the uttermost. Guys, no longer feel like you're unworthy. We were made worthy by the blood of the Lamb. Whenever I may even try to feel like this, I like to remember the story about Mephibosheth found in Second Samuel chapter 9. And from there you can read about the story of King David and Mephibosheth. In chapter 9 we would see that Mephibosheth was the son of Jonathan and the grandson of the first king of Israel, King Saul. After Jonathan's death, David went forth to show kindness to Saul's house. Mephibosheth had become lame at the young age of five. He had lived his entire life as a cripple. When David calls him forth, Mephibosheth replies, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? Guys, am I the only one that's ever felt like that too? Mephibosheth's identity of himself was completely based on his disability when in fact he was the grandson of a king. He had forgotten his royal lineage and was wallowing in self-pity. Yet David looked beyond his disability and recognizing who he was offered him a place at the king's table. Guys, how much time do we really spend wallowing in our self-pity, groaning about things with which we struggle daily, so much so that it becomes who we are? Guys, if I could just be totally honest, I know because I've been there and done that. And yes, whenever I preach or teach, <laughs> I'm preaching and teaching to myself. Guys, the enemy would love nothing more than to keep us focused on our disabilities, whether physically and or spiritually, so that we are distracted from the calling of God on our lives. Satan wants us to have a victim mentality. But let's not lose focus of the reality of who we really are. Guys, in Christ, we are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. And Jesus saved us from all our sins, past, present, and future. Guys, it's like this. The King of Glory has a place waiting for you and me at his table. Glory to God. Guys, in Christ we should no longer have a victim mentality, but have a victor mentality over yourself and over myself. Together, let's keep pressing forward. Let's keep pressing forward because our earthly walk is almost over and we go home at any moment. It's almost like I can smell the fragrance of rapture in the air. And speaking of air, it won't be long until we meet Jesus there. What a day of rejoicing that will truly, truly be. Guys, I hope you have been encouraged by this video. I, I just want you to know that my wife and I love each of you dearly and, and we'll be seeing you in heaven around the king's table at any time. And for those of you I said I would save a place, 
I will save a place. And I am almost confident that the Lord won't even mind. <laughs> glory to God. Glory to God. Guys, spend the rest of your day celebrating in the joy of the Lord. Because it is your strength. And Satan knows that. That's why he tries his best to discourage you and bring you down. Just say, not today, Satan. Glory to God. Guys, God's got this. He's got you. And we go home soon. Glory. We love you guys. God bless each and every one of you. And Maranatha. Father, heal each one within the sound of our voice, God. Give them hope. Give them hope. Give them health. Give them healing. Give them your everything, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, In Jesus', Jesus name. Hallelujah. The Most High God knows every star by name. Amen. The billions upon billions upon billions of stars, He knows each one by name. He knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows what hurts you and has hurt you. He knows the sickness you're enduring. God is breaking in with breakthrough. The anointing of God is piercing through ooh, the darkness that has surrounded you. Reach out, receive it, claim it. God will make a way where there seems no way. Amen. God is going to make a way for you to come up and out of the pain that's been holding you down. I thank you that you touch everyone's body, everyone's mind, everyone's everything that's watching this, this broadcast, Lord God. Touch them. Yes, heal them. Lord. Save them to the uttermost, Lord. Show yourself strong. Yes in their lives yes. show that god yes, is god, god. and he is well able he is yes. more than able so you just say a quick salvation prayer right now okay right repeat now. this prayer with us if you need jesus father in heaven thank you for sending your son jesus thank you to pay the penalty of my sins by dying on the cross in my place Thank you, Lord, that he died on the cross, but then the third day he rose again so that I can live a life of victory. Lord, I ask you to be Lord of my life and come into my heart. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So if you pray that prayer in faith, believing you're now a child of God. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen. Your, your past is past. Amen. Your sins are under the blood. They're behind you. And now the, walk forward in, in God. And the Most High wanted me to tell you, do not look behind you because you're not going that way. You keep moving forward. Keep your eyes on the prize which is before you. Amen. Thank you, Lord.